All right, so we shift our focus now to football and action in the Ray and Nephew Jamaica Premier League. Match week 22 concluded Monday night with host Anit Gardens brushing aside Cellar Dwellers Limehall Academy by three goals to nil. Let's hear from both camps. We really wanted to put on a better show to be honest. Um, I think we're a little bit impatient, especially in the, in the first half. We weren't connecting our passes. Um, uh, second half was a little bit better. Um, and I mean, we managed to, to put them under a little bit of um, pressure and score some goals, you know. But it wasn't uh, um, our best um, in terms of fluidity. But such is the nature of the game. We just wanted three points and we're glad we get it. Yes, it was a hard part one, but I guess after the own goal, it brings the team in a sleeping mood and we don't know what comes after. But we run out and change it because of the, the windows. But I see we, we short on gears today because we get the away gears short and some players have their gears at home. So. All right, here's a look now at the full results from round 22. So we have that one-all draw between Tivoli Gardens and Don Beholden. No, no goals in the draw between Portmore United and Waterhouse. Three goals for Humber Lion against Bear United. Mount Pleasant beating Cavalier 2-0. Malines United only needed one goal to get the job done against Harbour View. And again, that, no, that one was Malines United. Montego Bear United went ahead to get one goal against Treasure Beach. And Annette Gardens, we just heard from the coach over there, Xavier Gilbert, 3-0 against Lime Hall Academy. Well, the big storyline, though, is the race to complete the top six places with Don Beholden, Waterhouse and Montego Bay United all jostling for the last playoff spot. Let's take a closer look at the points table. So, Mount Pleasant at the top of the table, as you can see, on 49 points. Cavalier in second on 45. Tivoli and Portmore United, third and fourth. They both have 42 points. Let's take a look now at Arnett Gardens, also on 42 points. And that's a sixth spot that has been fluctuating. Don Beholden in 34 points. There's Waterhouse right there on 31. Montego Bay United also 31 points at the bottom of the table. Treasure Beach in 13th spot on 12 points and Limehole Academy on 7 points. Well, with us this afternoon to discuss this weekend's results and race for the playoff is our analyst and JPL commentator, Chris Taylor. He joins us via phone. Good afternoon, Chris. How are you? Greetings. Always a pleasure. Good to see you, Mariah. Yeah, it's it's been a while, Chris. I heard you were supposed to stop in studio. What happened? I, I'm wondering myself. <laughs> All right, that's fine. I think well, you ran out of seats there. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Another time. But Chris, we have to talk about this top six race. It has been so exciting. Lance and I, along with Ricardo, when he's here, we've been discussing how exciting it has been. These teams are on the edge of their seats. Your thoughts? Yeah, I think the top five have basically been consistent, right, um, for most of the Premier League. I think they, if, when you look at the first five teams, I mean, they have switched places within the five, but those five have been pretty secure. What is really up for grabs is the sixth position. Of course, the top six goes through to the playoffs, and that sixth position is a three-horse race at the moment between Dumbo Holden, Waterhouse, and of recent, Montego Bay United. I think those three really vying for that last spot. The other five above them, pretty safe at the moment. Uh, Mount Pleasant and Cavalier have been generally in that top two. And then Tivoli, Portmore and Arnett Gardens complete that top five. Um, and there, there's a bit of a buffer between them and the rest, as you can see on that table. Yeah. But that sixth position is really in, really interesting and, 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 and very exciting. And Mobile United coming into good form towards the back end of the season here. And with just four games to go and tied on points with Waterhouse. It's all to play for. As you can see, Dumble holding with a slight advantage there, a three-point lead, but that's just one match. Yes. So, you have four games to go and all to play for between six and eight. I think at it, as it stands now, Arnett Gardens to Mount Pleasant, pretty safe in terms of that being the top five. Uh, obviously, there will be some some push for maybe one of the other teams to slide in the top two automatic spots. As You know, Mount Pleasant and Cavalier in that blue are the, the two automatic qualifiers to the semi-finals. 
But based on how, based on form and how things are playing, I wouldn't be surprised if those two end up as the top two. And if not, maybe Tivoli Gardens could slide into that second position. Yeah, and I have to agree, form is something that we'll have to consider. But what about the upcoming four fixtures, four matches left? Do you think that will play a big spot? Because Don B. Holden will be playing Montego Bay United, Waterhouse, Cavalier and Vey United. Chris, do you think that will be difficult? And if so, which of the teams will be a tough opponent for Don B. Holden? Well, obviously, the match against Waterhouse will be tough for them because Waterhouse are currently in seventh position. So both of them playing for that for, in, for, for that spot and Mobile United as well. So double holding up both teams that they are competing against for that sixth spot will make it very difficult. Good for the Premier League, good for us as commentators and analysts and, and good <laughs> for the fans. Uh, Cavalier will obvious, obviously be a tough match for them as well. Cavalier currently in second. But Cavalier right now, um, going through some 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 uh, some lean form, so it might actually be a good time to play Cavalier, who were somewhat beaten badly by FC Cincinnati in the in the Concacaf Champions Cup. Uh, Vier United not necessarily getting good results of recent, so that's a must must win, I would think, for Dumble Holding. The advantage Dumble Holding have is that they have a three point lead on Waterhouse and Mobile United. So yeah. yeah. When you look at the fixtures, Moby, of, of course, they have Tivoli Garden. That will certainly be a tough match. Harborview haven't been in good form. And Malines are actually looking pretty good. That will be a tough match for Moby against Malines. And Malines have moved up the table as well into ninth spot and have gotten quite a few wins of recent. Uh, when you look at Waterhouse's fixtures, I think you would expect them to beat Treasure Beach. Again, the Malines match could be tough. And Harborview is not in the greatest of form. So... Yeah, it's interesting. Double holding probably with the toughest fixtures. However, uh, they also have a three-point advantage. Yeah, um, Chris, that's what I wanted to get from you because I was looking at Lenny Hyde on the bench on Sunday in their 1-1 draw with Tivoli and I was trying to read his body language because Tivoli is one of the best teams in the league at the moment and Don Beholden right. would have really um, benefited with a, re with a result there. In the end, they got a point. But if they had won that game, they would have a, a five-point cushion now on the teams chasing them to displace them in sixth. So how disappointed do you think Lenny Hyde would have been with that 1-1 draw against Tivoli on Sunday, given the fact that a victory would have made him a little bit more comfortable for the playoff spots? I think all things considered, Lenny was, was pretty happy, considering the surface at, at the Action 9 Stadium was not the best, let's call it. Straight. I think both coaches struggled to play their usual fluent tick-a-tack kind of football, heavy passing game on the Athenine Stadium turf. It was very hard. The ball was bouncing up a lot. Dumble Holden were also without their two most senior outfield players in Fabian McCarthy and Nicholas Nelson. Nicholas Nelson, their leading goal scorer, he was not there. And Fabian McCarthy was out due to injury. So both out due to injury. And that is another thing going into the final matches that's a big deal for Dumble Holding. We've seen them struggle to score and create a lot of opportunities without Nicholas Nelson. And actually, their flurry of goals came since Nicholas Nelson rejoined the squad from, from injury and other things. So I think a necessity, Lenny Hyde did say that he would be out for two weeks and one week has gone already. So hopefully he'll be back next week or the week after. And I think that's a a big deal for them because he's been really potent um, scoring-wise for them. Ten goals so far this season. And not only that, his ability to link up um, with the other with the other ad, um, forward attacking players as well. And he has a few assists under his belt as well. So he's a big deal. Fabian McCarthy brings that added protection in front of the back line. So I think he's a necessity in terms of keeping things solid for Dumble Holding. But I, I generally like their confidence. I like the style of football they have been playing. But those two players could be critical um, in terms of them getting favorable points with, with the remaining games. So yeah, I think that that is another thing that has to be looked at for them as well. But I think a point against Tivoli Gans, I think he would take that. Yeah, I want to ask you quickly about Waterhouse, but before we get there, uh, Mobe United haven't won the Premier League since 2016, and they've, we've seen a huge dip in their overall status as a, as a top-flight team in Jamaica in, in recent years. But I'm, I'm quite interested in the January transfers that they had. We've seen them boost their offence with um, the likes of Owen Gordon coming in and Brian Brown, who were previous Golden Boot winners in the Premier League. And the Trinidadian defender Trimmington now on, on their roster. 
So um, how much stronger is Montego Bay United now as we speak uh, compared to, let's say, November or December? I would say they are a lot more experienced because of those additions, Brian Brown. And as you say, it's like almost about 80 Premier League goals between Brian Brown and Owen Gordon. Both have held the golden boot at different stages of their career in the Jamaica Premier League. I think that's a big deal. They have also added Jordan Fletcher, who was overseas in India as well and was a part of Mount Pleasant. So I think from that standpoint and the attacking side of things, they look a lot better. They, they, they look confident going forward. Um, as you said, Trimington, he, they, there's been a couple of additions from a, from a Trinidad and Tobago perspective in the defence line for them at wing-back and at centre-back. But I think they have, it's just the, about the team buying into Neda de Santos's um, philosophy in terms of his, his play. And I, I think they look a lot more organised because of that. They look comfortable with the style of play. Still don't think they're at the level that we'd have seen back in 2015, 2016, though, Lance. Mm -hmm. um, they don't necessarily have that same quality. And let, let's face it, that the Western side of football, even if you look at schoolboy football, is not at its strongest right now. Cornwall College, St. James, Rossi is all struggling in terms of schoolboy football and big results. So I think that has reflected as well in the senior team. However, this, is, this period here is, is probably the best I've seen them for, for the season. And I think the Brazilians are doing very well. They have gotten accustomed to the... The, 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 the physical nature of the league, and I think they're coming into their own. Correa, Ferreira, both the keeper, both the goalkeeper, and their number ten, Ferreira, um, the central midfield. I think I think both all of them getting used to it. The, the cohesion is there, and so the matches will be very difficult. I think for for these three, for the double holding team and the Waterhouse team when they come up against them. Yeah, I want to ask you quickly about Waterhouse because I was telling Mariah at the top of the show that uh, Waterhouse had contested three consecutive finals between like 2018, 2019, 2021, um, skip the COVID year. Um, but they've struggled the past couple of seasons, missing the playoffs last season and now on the verge of, of not making the playoffs again. Is, is, is there pressure on the coach to keep his job because um, Waterhouse is a very demanding football club and they're accustomed to seeing their, their club in the top flight? I actually don't know what to guess with Waterhouse because they have been the most inconsistent of those three, in my eyes, right through. They, they turn up and they can play a game and you say to, you say to yourself, wow, this is the old Waterhouse. And then you just don't see that again for five week, five match weeks. Um, of the three teams, I, I unfortunately like Waterhouse's chances the least. You just never know, and, and that is why it's hard to bank. And then, yes, and Marcel Gale has alluded to that as well. One of the things going in their favour is that they have Javain Bryan, one of the league's leading goal scorers, who is in their starting lineup and generally playing well. They have a, a Nikoi Christian who should be coming back into the fold. He was out for a couple of match weeks, and you know what he can do in terms of creativity and what he can add to this team. If those players click along with a Denada Thomas, who has been very disappointing, I think, this season, Denada Thomas, then Waterhouse can even win the league because those those players are so influential that anything is possible. But I, I just can't bank on it from Waterhouse. And I at this point in the season, I actually rather how Dumble Holden are playing, provided McCarthy and Nelson are back in the starting lineup and fit. Mm -hmm. And and how Mobe United are, are improving at the right time in their season. Yeah. And before we go, Chris, we have to remember that in the past decade we've seen at least twice when the team that finished sixth in the regular season ended up winning the Premier League. So uh, the regular season, some regular season form sometimes doesn't transition into the championship title. No, at all. I, I totally agree with you. And, and this was one of the things actually Marcel Fozigail and I were laughing about that. You know, when Harvard you won it, they were so inconsistent in the preliminary round. Nobody gave them even a chance. They were a surprise number six team. And then all of a sudden in the playoffs, they were a monster. You know, they, 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 everything started to click at the right time and a lot of the other teams couldn't adjust. And you just wonder if Dumble Hole and Moby United or Waterhouse will fall into that. I, I do see, though, where Dumble Hole and Moby United in the last five or so match weeks have, have looked a lot better, a lot more organised, um, a lot more dangerous, especially Dumble Hole in with Nelson. But... As you said, it could be a story like that for Waterhouse, who 
That season when Water when Harborview won, Waterhouse were the best looking team in the preliminary round, won the preliminary round hands down, yes. and then they couldn't win a match in the pre in the postseason and they finished fourth. Yeah, we, out yeah. of the four teams. Yeah, we're gonna leave it there, Chris. But that last time on it, Garns won the Premier League as well. I think back in 2017, they were sixth in the regular season and ended up winning the uh, dominating the playoffs and and winning the entire thing, beating Portmore United in the final. But it's it's gripping as it now stands, Chris, and we'll continue to uh, watch your excellent coverage of the Jamaica Premier League sponsored by Ray and Nephew uh, Sports Max the home of champions giving you top flight domestic football in Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago but let's see how this one plays out Chris and then we look forward to the playoffs thanks again very exciting stuff we look forward to more yeah great back with more on the Sports Max Zone after this